Hello everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have another 10 card one kit video featuring our new Butterfly Kisses card kit. Here I'm just showing you everything you get in the kit. You get the Butterfly Kisses 6x6 pattern paper pad. You get four of each paper design. You also get the Hello Butterfly layering stencil and its coordinating butterfly die, and you also get that Hello Word die with the shadow die. And then the stamp set is this Spread Your Wings All Butterfly set with some beautiful sentiments, and the only extra product I really pulled in were the coordinating dies to save some time. The card kit also includes two sequin mixes, or I guess embellishment mixes. This one has green pearls, yellow pearls, some clear gems, and clay flowers. The other one has clay butterfly wings with purple gems. So I'm going to start by coloring all of the butterflies for my 10 cards. I ended up stamping two sheets of black butterflies and two that were gold heat embossed. And I had I think like four or five butterflies left over so I had just the right amount to have a nice selection to choose from and I'm just gonna show you one set this is all of the butterflies and all of the sentiments just stamped on 110 pound white Nina cardstock with Versafine onyx black ink and <clears throat> Versafine is not a alcohol friendly ink so but I wanted that black crisp ink for these butterflies so what I did was clear heat emboss over it and that traps the ink inside so that it won't smudge when I go in and color with my Copics. I wanted a lot of my butterflies to have two color families so you can see with this one I started with a teal in the center and I am fading it out into like a blue green. So on the edges, I'm just going to add my lightest green shade. And then, so some of them I made two-toned butterflies, like purple and pink, blue and purple, blue and green. And then some I went with a solid color. I love these butterflies because three of them are big. So you can put them on an A2 card just by themselves, and that's your focal point. Or you can make some larger size cars and incorporate more than one butterfly. But this particular 10 card video did not take as long as my typical ones do just because the overall designs were much more simple and I didn't have to use as many stamped images than I typically do when I'm creating like scene cards um, or other 10 card videos. So with this butterfly, I went from purple to pink, and when you transition to another color family, all I suggest is to use a, in this case, like a light purple with a light pink, overlap the colors, and that's it. It's going to blend really nicely. Alcohol markers are designed to work with similar color families and fade into different colors. So with this one, I went from red to orange, I think, or red to yellow, and as always, I go with my darkest marker and fade it out into my lightest. Yeah, so I think I'm going from orange to yellow. And this is going to be kind of like a monarch butterfly. I really liked these ones that were stamped with black ink over the gold heat embossed ones. But I wanted to try something different because I have been posting so many butterfly cards lately. So I just kind of wanted to try the gold heat embossed and they were elegant in their own way but I do think that the black ink just looks more lifelike. And while I color I want to announce something exciting and that is that I am going to be attending the Scrapbook Expo in Orlando this year. So it's going to be May 19th and 20th I believe. And I am teaching five classes at the expo. I wasn't expecting to uh, get five classes approved. I thought maybe two or three would. But I am very excited. I know a lot of you have been asking for in-person classes. And the expo is huge. If you live in Florida, they have like buses that go from Miami to Orlando, from Tampa to Orlando. And if you are interested in it, there are Facebook groups with more information, and I just am so excited to meet 
some of you. And this is my first, I guess, like big trade show I've done. So hopefully all goes well. And maybe in the next year or two, I can start traveling to other states and attending them and also teaching classes. So if you are interested, my classes should be posted on the Scrapbook Expo website, I think this week, maybe next week. I can't really um, disclose what the classes are, but they are all pop-ups. So all you have to do is find one that you really resonate with. And I will say all of our classes include a free product as well. So you're getting part of the class money back with the product. And once the classes are posted on Scrapbook Expo's website, I'm also going to do an email. So if you want to sign up for my newsletter, once those classes post, I will be sending an email to all of my Florida customers. And that way you can get more information on the class, what you get in the class, what you're going to learn. And so, yeah, I thought I'd throw that out there. If you're not in Florida, maybe you are coming on vacation during that time. You can also reach out to me for more information if you are interested. But yeah, I'm super excited. This has been one of the main reasons I started Scrappy Tales and getting in this industry was so that I could travel and teach classes and uh, meet people. And since COVID, you know, I started my company in COVID. I haven't really met anyone in real life. So this is going to be very, very fun. All right, so here are the other uh, sheets that I colored and stamped. I did end up with a lot more sentiments than I needed, um, but I had all of the images arranged, so I figured I'm just going to stamp them all at once and then have extra sentiments for future cards. For my first card, I'm going to be creating a black frame to start. I die cut that frame four times from heavyweight black cardstock. Those are going to be stacked on top of each other. So I am going to be creating a shaker, but this one's a little bit different. I wanted to have a clear shaker that you would see from the inside of the card as well. So I took that same stitch rectangle die and cut the same frame from the front of my card base. Make sure you open the card so that you don't cut through your entire card base. You want the back side to be solid. Then on that, I'm going to add some acetate. So this allows you to still see through the card. And what I'll do on the top of my black frame, I'll add another sheet of acetate so that it is completely see-through. I wanted this card to look like those butterfly display cases. I have a few of them in my craft room actually because I love butterflies. But basically it is when butterflies die, scientists will open up their wings and um, make art out of them. And um, my brother lives in Key West, so there is a butterfly museum there where I get all my display cases and they do die on their own. They're not killed for the artwork, but they're really beautiful. And uh, so that's the look I was going for. I wasn't initially going to make this into a shaker, but once I added my butterflies inside this black frame, I thought it was kind of plain. I do think it was pretty though. Maybe I should have went with my initial plan, but I had the sequins. There's two embellishment mixes included in the kit, so I figured I'm just going to use it. I already have all the layers built up with the frame, and these artwork pieces do have these really thick frames uh, with the butterflies inlaid inside. So that's why I initially cut all of these frames. So you can see on that final frame that I glued on top, I added acetate behind it. So that's going to create the shaker window. And here's where I decide, okay, I'm just going to add the green, yellow, and pink embellishment mix. I'm going to take out a few of these enamel flowers. If you watched my last video, I used these sequins. And I ended up with a bunch of extra flowers that I took out from the first shaker I made. So I don't want quite as many of those. So I took a few out. Then I added my frame on top of my card base. And I didn't add too many sequins in there because there really isn't that many layers on the frame. But you can see that it still shakes around really nice. 
And then I'll go ahead and add my gold heat embossed butterflies. And in this case, I really like the gold. I think with these particular colors. And then in the bottom left corner, I added a sentiment from the stamp set. I think this says to the best mom in the world. You guys know me. I'm always going to add stacked die cuts behind for a little bit of dimension. I did cut extra die cuts for my butterflies, but I ended up not adding them behind my colored ones because I end up on all of my cards just gluing the bodies of the butterflies so that I can pop up their wings. So there really was no need for the extra layers. So I really didn't need to cut those. I'm going to use some more of the same embellishment mix to add some pearls to my butterfly wings. And then I still thought that it was a little plain, so I'm going to add this skinny gold frame all around. And this just ties in the gold embossing. And this is one of my favorite cards. I really like how it turned out. And you'll see once I open the card that it's not your typical shaker, so you can see it from the inside. Now, you can see my coloring ble bleeding through the back of these butterflies, so I am going to use those extra die cuts just to cover those from the inside of the card. So this was really the only time I used those extra die cuts. And this just looks a little bit more clean. And then that finishes off my first card. This one's super pretty. I love the colors. And by the way, I used that embellishment mix, like I said, on my last video, and I still have a ton left over. I managed to make two shaker cards uh, with the mix and also have plenty left over for just embellishing my cards. So for my second card, I am going to be using whatever ink is left on my blender brushes to create a rainbow, like a very soft rainbow, on a slimline card panel. I think this is eight and a quarter by three and a quarter. And I didn't want to add like heavy amounts of ink because my coloring is super vibrant and I didn't want to distract from them. So that's why I'm just using whatever ink is on my brush, but I use the colors that are actually on my butterflies to make the rainbow. I am going to sprinkle some water droplets over this, just to add a little bit of texture, or help the colors fade into each other a bit more. You can see I did not get a perfect blend, but these butterflies are going to cover the majority of this background, so I didn't worry too much about that. I did kind of cascade my butterflies from largest to smallest going towards the top. And this card, and all of them, all the cards, honestly, were really fast to put together. Like I said, it typically takes me two whole days to film a 10 card one kit video, but this was only about a day and a half because the card designs were so simple. At the top there, I had a little space left over for a sentiment, so I went with Happy Mother's Day. And then again, I'm going to use the embellishments that come in the kit to add a little more interest to this pretty simple design. I'm also going to pull in a few pearls from my stash just to finish off the colors that are not included in the kit. So there's yellow, green, and purple. So I needed to have coral and blue to finish off the rainbow. And what I like about these mixes is that there's typically more than one color. So there's two shades of purple in the one mix, and then there's green and yellow in the other. So you can uh, just pick and choose what you want to use on each of your cards or use them all together, which is what I did on the last card. All right, so I just added them in the open areas of the background. I added a black mat behind my rainbow panel and then I'll just glue that to a slimline card base. And I do really like the black mat, especially on any kind of colorful card. The black really just draws your eye in. And that finishes off my second design. And this uses all of the butterflies in the stamp on one card. 
And my third card features one of the Hello stenciled butterflies that are included in the kit. So you saw in the beginning that there is a six layered stencil with a coordinating butterfly die and a coordinating Hello Word die with its shadow. I have made a whole video on these stenciled butterflies. It's one of my favorite videos I've ever posted. They just turned out absolutely beautiful. I managed to use the remaining ones I had left over. I think I might have like two or three left that I'm just honestly gonna stick in random places around my house. So if you want to check out that video, I will have it linked in the eye above here and also in my video description. And I also used a lot of the kit components, including the Butterfly Kisses pet paper pad in that video too. So really you'll get even more ideas because they are butterfly cards and you can also use the stamp butterflies from this kit instead. So yes. All right, so this design again is super simple. I went with the navy butterfly pattern in the background cut to four by five and a quarter. I cut two circles, one from cream and one from another pattern paper. I offset them a little bit just to kind of break up the two patterns. I added a green stenciled butterfly that is embellished with gold pearls at the top of the circle and then below it I added a sentiment I think it says thank you for all you do grandma that is gold heat embossed and then I just embellished the rest of the card with those pink green and yellow embellishments that are included in the kit and that finishes off my third design and for all of my stenciled butterflies today I use distress oxide inks but you can see the beautiful pattern on the wings and then the coordinating die adds etched lines to the butterfly wings and it's super pretty. All right, so moving on to card number four, I am going to pull in a die set. I really felt like this card just needed a little extra something to it. I also die cut the Hello Word die once from gold cardstock and twice from heavyweight cream cardstock that I added behind for a little bit of extra dimension. And then I cut the Hello Shadow die from white cardstock. I'm going to use one of the larger butterflies from the stamp set. Like I said, these larger ones, you can really add just a single butterfly and your card is done. So here I have my, uh, this is my intricate slimline lace border. And this die is designed to create like a hilly um, decorative border. And I really wanted it to be straight. So what I'm going to do is selectively cut it apart so that I can glue it some parts further in and some parts further out so that in the end it looks like a straight border. You can use whatever border dies you have in your stash. These are really pretty and they are slimline size, so they could go on a slimline card or you can trim them down like I'm doing to work for any sized card. And I just cut those from white card stock and this just adds a nice little bit of detail. You obviously don't have to do this and when I make my 10 card videos, I try very, very hard not to include any other extra product, but I just knew that this card would be super pretty with these added on each side of this pink daisy pattern paper and upon first glance I am using some very busy patterns on my cards today but I am complementing them with the less busy monochromatic prints that are included here I did add a single white die cut behind the butterfly again this is where I realized I don't need those extra die cuts but I went ahead and added it to this one. In the center of this butterfly, I'm going to add a spread your wings gold heat embossed sentiment. And then below, I'm going to add the hello word die. So yes, I whenever I have more busy patterns, I do kind of tone it down with a less busy pattern. So this is a square design. So I have a five and a quarter by five and a quarter inch square card base here. I'm going to add my yellow strips on the sides. There's about an eighth of an inch on each side showing through. And then this piece will go right in the middle. And then to embellish this card, I thought it would be cute to add the yellow pearls from the embellishment mix to the centers of all the daisies on the pattern paper. There are three sizes of yellow pearls in this mix. So I went with the two smaller 
sizes. And then that finishes off that design. And I think we're on card number five. This one is really pretty, one of my favorites. All right, this one is actually, I think my favorite out of all of them. I wanted to use these more monochromatic patterns. They're all the same pattern, but they're in different colors. And I had the exact matching butterflies to go with all of these patterns. So I thought I would stack them on top of each other like little blocks. So I have my green one at the top, my yellow in the center, and my blue at the bottom. All of these I think are cut to two and a quarter wide, I mean tall, by four and three quarters wide. So this is going to be an A7 card. And here you can see I have all my stenciled butterflies. I'm going to stack them over to the left side. This card was missing something, so I cut some gold cardstock strips that I'm going to add between each of the three blocks. And I just love how perfectly the butterflies match to the pattern papers. And that was not planned because, as you know, in my last video, I used all of these butterflies and it just so happened that I had three that perfectly matched the um, pattern paper. So it worked out really nice. And if you really enjoy these butterflies, I do have two other butterfly designs in the shop. And I really feel like once you start stenciling these butterflies, you're going to become addicted. I literally could not stop making butterflies once I started. It was a very relaxing process for me. So here you can see I'm moving my butterflies around, but I end up still keeping them on the left side. I'm not going to add much else to this card because I really wanted that pattern paper to shine through. So I'm just going to add a simple sentiment. I think this says, congrats, you did it. You're going to fly high. And by the way, each of my stenciled butterflies are embellished with some of our embellishment gem mixes. And again, if you watch my last video, you'll see how I embellished all of the stenciled butterflies. Again, I'm going to embellish each section with the pearls that are included in that flower mix. And then I'm going to pull in just some light aqua pearls for the bottom blue part of this card. And then that finishes off my fifth card design. I'm just going to add it to my A7 card base. And that's it, super pretty. For card six, this one is my least favorite, I'll admit, but at this point I was kind of running out of ideas. So I just found another pattern paper that I liked. Again, I toned it back with the monochromatic yellow strip at the bottom. Thought about using three of the gold heat embossed butterflies, but I only end up going with two. I did like on my last card the separation of the two papers with a gold strip of cardstock, so I added that to the bottom. And then I just found some butterflies that matched the colors on the paper. By the way, I chose my Copic markers based off the colors that are in the paper pad. So that's a great way if you don't know what colors to use in your card kits, just look at the pattern papers. That way everything is going to match nicely. So I added two butterflies, one to the top, one to the bottom, and then also a spread your wings gold heat embossed sentiment. Going to mat this on light purple cardstock, and that's pretty much it. This was my fastest card out of all of them. I don't know, I don't really like the gold heat embossed butterflies on this design for some reason. So if I were to do it again, and if I had extra butterflies that were stamped in black, I probably would have went with those instead. Again, I'm going to embellish these butterfly wings with the gems that are included in both mixes. And that finishes off that card design. 
For card six, I'm going to create another shaker, this time using the purple embellishment mix from the kit. I'm going to cut a smaller square from the top of this ombre pattern paper. You can see there's a tiny bit of pink showing on the top left. I'm going to color the, uh, cover that with a large butterfly. And the paper pad includes two ombre backgrounds, which are great if you don't feel like ink blending. I only ink blended that one slimline card, so that made these cards go a lot faster. Again, I'm going to create my shaker walls with three cream square frames. I created the frames by using that small square that I cut from the pattern paper, and then I nested it inside a slightly larger square to create the frame. My final layer, I'm going to add acetate behind this dark purple frame and then add that to the stacked cream frames. And then that's just gonna go right there. And then three, I would say three to four heavyweight die cuts will create a perfect shaker window for those gems to move around. So those embellishments are actually a little bit thicker than typical sequins or clay mixes. So definitely go up on your frames if you can. But I found that four was perfect. On this card, I'm going to use the large purple gold heat embossed butterfly and then a slightly smaller teal one. Again, they perfectly match the pattern in the background, which is nice. Here is that other embellishment mix. This one has really cute butterfly wings in it, along with two shades of purple gems. And then I'll just go ahead and glue this panel right on top of my light purple background. And then at the bottom there, I've added a sentiment that says, with love to my amazing mother-in-law. This time I wanted to match the shaker frame with the same dark purple mat. And then again, I'm going to embellish both butterflies with the purple embellishment mix. I'll also add a few to the actual shaker window and to the card. And this one is also one of my favorite designs. It's really pretty. I love the colors. For that light blue teal butterfly, I went with the light purple gems. And that finishes off, I think, card six, maybe? This is card seven. I'm going to cut a stitched rectangle die from that green monochromatic pattern paper. My background is that same navy paper with the butterflies in the background. And then I found some coordinating butterflies that match the paper. I went with the large teal butterfly that fades off into green and then a solid teal butterfly for the top of the card. This card design is really simple, so I thought I would add some black mats behind each of the layers to kind of add a little more interest. And this is an A2 card design, and again, you can see that these butterflies, you really only need one or two to finish off a card. I'm going with a larger sentiment. This is the one that says, you did it. You're going to fly high. I'm going to add two heavyweight die cuts behind to add a little bit of dimension. And then I'm going to embellish this card with the clear gems that are included in that pink flower mix. So I'm not going to use any of the actual colors from that, just those clear gems. Added a black mat behind my navy pattern paper. Then I'll add that to my card base. And then again, just pick out the clear gems to embellish both the butterflies and the actual card panel. And that's it. For card eight, I'm going to create another slimline using the blue monochromatic pa pattern paper 
And because it's six by six paper, I did have to cut two pieces to make it go all the way down a slimline card. But I am going to cover where those two papers meet with my sentiment. So here I have some more gold heat embossed butterflies, all in shades of blue and green. So they all match really nicely. At first I thought I was going to use the hello word die, but it just didn't stand out and it was also a little too big for me. So I'm actually going to use that on my next card and on this one I'm going to pick out another sentiment. This one's a longer one so that it completely covers where those two papers meet. This is the mother-in-law sentiment. Again, I'm going to embellish each of the butterfly wings with the green pearls from the pink flower mix and then some teal pearls from my stash. And then I don't think I add any pearls to the actual pattern paper. I think I just add it to the butterfly wings. And this again, another simple design, but the butterflies speak for themselves. They're drawn realistically. And the coloring did take a bit of time. I always have to remind myself that while these cards are very simple and they might only take 10 to 20 minutes to finish, I have to keep in mind that I spent a lot of time coloring them. All right, so my next design, I will admit this is a design I recycled from my last video, but I liked it so much I figured why not just use it again. I chose the kind of coral pink pattern paper from the paper pad along with the green monochromatic that I die cut from an oval. Behind it I added two heavyweight white die cut ovals for a little bit of dimension. I took a red and yellow stenciled butterfly, added that to the top of the oval, and then the hello word die to the bottom. I did not use the shadow die for this card. And then I'm just going to embellish the rest of the card with the pink flower mix. I'm even adding those pink flowers to this one because they match the color scheme. And this is another one of my favorites. I really like the colors on it. Okay, so I guess that was my final card. Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to show you all 10 cards that I made. Please let me know which card is your favorite in the comment section down below. I will have the Butterfly Kisses card kit linked in my video description. I don't have a lot of these kits left, and once they sell out, they sell out. I will not restock them. If you want just the stamp set or just the stencil butterfly, I do have those for separate purchase that I will also have linked down below. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And if you haven't yet already, please subscribe to my channel. We are slowly growing in the ranks, which is very exciting. And also comment and like this video. That's going to help it get seen to other viewers. So I hope you all have an amazing rest of your week. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.